Ken and Michael here for episode 31 of A Shot of Business Central and a Beer. And uh, today we'll be talking about the latest and you know greatest Business Central news. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, what app do we say we're going to look at today? I already forgot. A payroll app payroll. from ADP. There you go, ADP. And then we're going to be take, taking a look at, uh, for the feature segment, the ability to add images, I guess, within Business Central. Absolutely. That's one way to look at it. So... But before, before all that, Ken, how's it going? How are you? Yeah. A beautiful fall day. It's doing great. Uh, I've been real, very busy uh, with working with clients, attending conferences, which we're going to get to in a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, and and today, literally, as we sit here, I'm I'm literally very thirsty. <laughs> so uh, thank you for bringing in the beer today, and I'm looking forward to this. This is actually a type of beer that we have not uh, yet drinking, believe it or not. We have not yet. So uh, before we get into what it is, <clears throat> my intention when I went to Benny's to pick out the beer was to find a pumpkin beer. And I looked online and I saw there was one by, uh, is it O'Fallon? I think it's O'Fallon. And it was a vanilla pumpkin beer. And the ratings were phenomenal. And I went to Benny's, looked around for 10 minutes, couldn't find it, and asked the guy, he's like, oh, what are you, crazy? We sold out with that like two weeks ago. I was like, oh. So he's like, so he points me to another desk where they have all this different um, fall pumpkin esque alcohol that you can pick up on or whatever. And this wasn't on the desk, but it was next to like the little table. So I was like, oh, all right, let's, let's look at this. And it said nitro vanilla porter. And uh, so what, what's different about it is though, is that the nitrogen charge creates a soft pillowy head that smooths every crisp. So when you pour this actually into a glass, supposedly you can watch like a cascading fall of foam. Like a Guinness. I guess so, like a Guinness, yeah. Is a Guinness nitro charge too? Uh, I think, I don't know if it's nitro charge, but it does have, right? Like if you've ever had a can of Guinness, there's like a little ball in there. Is there? Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, there's something unique about like when you when you pour it, right? The way that the taps, you ever notice the tap for a Guinness is a little bit different than the other taps? Guinness, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I feel bad then because the whole reason why I bought this was because it's supposed to be a little bit different, but... You're, well, it you're is. Obviously, well, it's different well, to the show, I guess. But. Yeah. But it is, yeah. We've never had a porter before. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm, 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 whoa, did you hear that? Yeah. It was yeah, pretty. They, I had to look make sure was it coming out. There was definitely <laughs> uh, a roar out of the can uh, when I opened it. So these are 16-ounce cans, uh, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, smooth cascading porter with dark malts. It so, has a domestic smell to it at first. Yeah. So it's kind of like a stout, very dark, uh, dark um, yeah, the porter. color, right? Pouring it. I'm not getting, well, let's see. So when I poured it into my glass here, uh, it's kind of like, it seems like there's not a ton of foam on oh. the top. Not a big, not a lot of uh, head on there at all. Yeah, I'm wondering if I shouldn't have tilted the glass when I poured it. But now I'm, now I'm watching it. I do see some like, you know, tiny bubbles around the outside kind of cascading up. Yeah. Uh, along from the side. It's nice. Yeah, it's a dark color. It's got a cream colored foam, I'd say, or head, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Now I can smell it a little bit better than, than with the can. You get more of the malty flavor. Yeah, definitely brown it smells brown like, malts, Yeah. like dark roasted malts. It smells in there. like a beer I think we've had before. I can't remember. We have. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, look I don't know it which up. one it is, but. Yeah, we've had a, a similar one, but officially it, that was not a porter. Right, right. Uh, but it's just a dark colored beer. It's kind of similar to a stout, right? Um, Here goes first sip. Oh, wow. Did you try it yet? Nope. It does not taste like, well, maybe you'll see. It's smooth. They weren't lying in the reviews. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is. It is it very is. smooth. That's Almost very smooth. flat. Yeah, yeah. Which it I is. think we had another beer where it was the same thing, though. Maybe it was... Well, that's kind of the 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 there's yeah, a well, you know misconception with Guinness, right? People look at a Guinness and it looks dark and thick, right, yeah. and heavy. It's actually very light in terms of the uh, calories in, in a Guinness and the drinkability of a Guinness, right? It's, it's actually smooth, too? smooth. Yeah, really? exactly. Right. It looks like it's order it looks like it's very strong and very harsh, but this is actually, I mean, not terribly different. Uh, porters and stouts are kind of similar yeah. uh, in nature. 
right? It's pretty, it's definitely pretty smooth. I noticed that it has a, a pretty high ranking on, on Beer Advocate, right? I think it's ranked right number 87 out of yeah. 3,900 in that group. Yeah, so the original, I mean, I mean, really originally like stouts were were really originally porters. Right. Oh, right. So, so the, this this dark style of beer, right, was always called a porter, and then and then like at a pub in in England in London wherever, right? Yeah, then they would they would have porters, and then you could also order a stout porter. Oh, really? And a stout porter was a stronger version of a of, a, of a porter, oh, a porter. right? Porter. And then they kind of just kind of it just kind of became oh, give me a stout. Right. Instead of saying, give me a stout porter. Right. People just say, give me a stout. So then stouts kind of branched off and generally became known as a uh, more bitter, stronger beer. Whereas the porter was a little bit lighter, easier drinking. But sort of the same flavor. I same guess. family. Yeah. Gotcha. Kind of classic just not as strong. beer. Right. Not bad. Not yeah. bad at all. So did you find any funny uh, uh, reviews on beer advocate about about the beer i know you love oh, i did beer yeah i mean I, I guess the first thing let's start i mean the the you know the alcohol percentage like you said it's very smooth right it's only like 5.4 right percent uh you know and i think the I lost the bitterness uh i think it's 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 like but a 16 it's low ibu is 16 low right yeah. that number is very low yeah. and i'm actually surprised this this drink is available year round i would think with the vanilla and stuff, to me, it tends to be more it's like a fall. winter, yeah, fall winter type yeah. of a drink. I mean, yeah, I think I definitely would drink it more in the fall and winter, right? It's that that type of beer, um, you know. And I think again, I so this is one of those um, beer, right? So so a, a stout porter, like a dark beer. Uh, you know, when we go into Beer Advocate, we always said like these are the these are the beers like that these guys, these people who are who are doing this love, right? Oh, of course, they, yeah. They, anything that's not a dark, stout, heavy yeah. alcohol, yeah. right? They hate it. Right. Well, now this is a stout uh, porter, like a porter, right? Yeah. That actually is has like a very easy drinking, right? So you would... They don't like it, right? <laughs> of they, course not. Right? It's, it's not it's strong not, enough, yeah. right? Um, but let, let's start. So let's start positive, though, right? I don't want to um, hurt your feelings too bad for for bringing this in. No, uh, I, I like it though; it's good. Um, this guy says, "I love these nitro brews from Breckenridge. They tend to be way better on tap than from a can, although the nitro gives it a soft, fluffy mouthfeel without the carbonation sting. Rich and decadent." Okay. Right. He okay. liked it or she liked it. Next guy is kind of like mechanical, uh, pours brown in color, the creamy nitro head, good head retention, lighter in color than I expected, weak aroma. Okay. Overall, not so good, right? <laughs> uh, next guy goes, overall, the look, this beer goes downhill in, in, in most categories. The thinness is a big disappointment. Uh all the, on the other hand, it's very easy to drink, even slammable. <laughs> Why? Well, right? It's kind of hand in hand with thinness. All right, now let's let's you know now yeah, uh, some of the some of the lower ratings. Uh, this beer is total crap. I'd rather drink piss water. <laughs> uh, there are no noticeable vanilla notes. The mouth fe mouth feels what you would expect from a nitro beer. You are better than this Breckenridge. <laughs> oh my god. So, so Breckenridge, online, he's a fan of Breckenridge, Breckenridge, Breckenridge Brewery, but does not like this beer. So, you know, it's funny because I have to agree with a little bit of what each one of those those comments said. Yes, it's thin, it's smooth. I don't I don't see the creamy foam part that they keep talking about though. Um, you know, the, the the smell of it, I get I get a smell. I don't smell as much vanilla, I guess, as I, I would think. But I, I tend to find that, like, with all beers, whatever it says, you don't really. Right. You want it to be lighter. You don't want to. I don't want those, like, a vanilla note or a cherry note or something smacking me in the face. Or drowns out the taste of the beer. Yeah, where that's, like, all you taste, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I kind of like just the little hint of whatever it is yeah. in there. Here, I'll leave you, won't give you one more. Okay. And And so for people who are listening who are, like, trying to create an image of like what does this 
taste like. <laughs> it says, uh, I wouldn't call this a porter. More like a watery black and tan made from some bad black and tan beers. <laughs> I guess that, that's an image then, for sure. <laughs> right. They're a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can tell you what I don't like with beers though after drinking this only two sips. I am not a fan of non-carbonated beers. Yeah, this does have a low lower carbonation. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. almost too smooth for me. So I think if it was this smooth, I'd actually want it to be a little thicker, a little heavier, I guess. Yeah. With the one exception of the of the um we had the the monk uh uh, Belgium. Oh, they make the monks make it. Yeah, the Trappist, yeah. Yeah. the Trappist ale, which had super high carbonation, yeah, right? Very high. But but these these uh, let's call them English or or Irish uh, ales or yeah. or darks, all are kind of lower in the carbonation. Yeah, they seem know? to be. They seem to be for sure. I think that's kind of a commonality. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't drink enough beer to to. to I was I was scared when I saw Porter, uh, when I you know when, when we got here. But Did you think uh, high alcohol? Uh, yeah, out? like Did super you? strong, <laughs> high alcohol. I like, go, oh, he did it to me again. No, it's funny. The other beer that I was gonna choose, some pumpkin, whatever, was like a, a nine point four percent alcohol. Kind of like, no, no, Ken's not gonna, you're not gonna like that. And then I saw this, and it didn't have the alcohol content on the box anywhere. I was like, all right, whatever, I can leave blaming on that. But it turns out it's pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, thank you for not bringing in the pumpkin spice beer. Yeah, I, w I wanted to get a pumpkin spice one just because I don't think we've had one. You know, no, we had that bad experience. Well, the last one I drank yeah. was it, it. It literally tasted like I was drinking from a a bowl of pulpery. Yeah, like someone pulpery dared like me to take like yeah, like so, like they soaked or something. Yeah. yeah, like they soaked some pulpery in water and yeah. then dared me to drink it. I had it was bad. Is that a shout out to Mark? Is Mark the one who brought that in? Oh, I, I don't. I'm not <laughs> sure exactly who, but it was. Uh, it left. I think it, it left. Was Mark. It left. It well it left its mark on me. I'll tell you <laughs> that. So yeah, so I'm excited here. We got some. Uh, we got an exciting uh, some some news yeah. here, and then uh, some an app and some a new feature we're we're going to talk about. Here. Yeah. All right. So. Stay tuned, everybody. We are back for the shot of Business Central, and uh, I want to say we got some interesting news this month around for this episode. Not probably a lot of news, you know, with new features and updates as, as in months past, just because the major update is set to, well, was set to come out on uh, October 30th, right? End of October, yeah. The business release version 19, but there tends to be a little bit of an issue with it. You got an email, right? And said... Yeah. So most, uh, yeah. A lot, um, if you're running Business Central and you're getting the notifications, you you may have originally gotten a, a notification that says that your Business Central online environment is going to be updated on or after October 30th, right. and then uh, maybe let's say relatively shortly after that, within a week. Probably. Yeah, there was another one that said that the deployment was being delayed. Yeah. So we're un unsure right now exactly <laughs> when uh, that update's going to be applied. But yeah. um, I, I, if I had to guess, I would say it's safe to say sometime in November. Um, if, if that, I, right. I, I think there's like a possibility that it, that that environments still possibly could be updated at the tail tail end of October, yeah. which is where we're at right now. Um, just yeah. we haven't seen it as of right, right this moment. They're probably running some final tests and. And one, you know, maybe one out of one thousand got got you know tied up on something, and yeah. And I think we've said this before. This has happened at least once before over the past couple of years. Uh, and I think that our consensus, and I would say that probably, hopefully, the consensus for everyone is, if if, if maybe there was some issue identified, mm -hmm. um, that they're taking their time to resolve it, great, to make sure that the the right environments don't get negatively yep. impacted by it right it doesn't happen to you when you do it so yeah that's so it's a good thing i don't think people are too upset you know hey it's going to be delayed a little bit yeah um but so that's one thing and then uh yeah i would i would i would i would say that not only are people not upset that their updates are delayed that 
most users don't even know that there's an update coming. <laughs> Some might right? be happy, right? And and uh, not to say that I'm not I'm not like I'm not bad mouthing users. I'm saying they have a job to do. Right. They're busy. Everyone seems to be busy these days. Sure. Right. More so than ever, and um, they're probably not taking the time. Uh, hopefully, they're listening to this podcast and spending one hour a month to stay up to date on what's going yep. on. Yep. Um, but if if they're not. They, they probably don't even know that there's updates that have been going on. Yeah. And that I think is a testament to the success of Business Central Online, that, the that they don't even really know or pay attention to when updates are coming out or have been released. And I think the general consensus is with change is, you know, it takes time to relearn things. So if somebody says something's gonna change, you don't wanna you know, have to spend the time to relearn it and, yeah. and, and, and do whatever, you know what I mean? So, yeah. all right, next up, uh, I don't know, do you want to talk about the Shopify, uh, you know, the Microsoft, supposedly Microsoft partners with Shopify to expand Dynamics 365 Business Central ecosystem? Yeah, so, so you know, there was an announcement recently that came out. Maybe people stumbled across it and, and it was, you know, that Microsoft is going to create some tools to, to, to integrate with uh, Shopify. Shopify, uh, right, is an online e-commerce mm -hmm. platform. Uh, it's it's more and more popular, uh, mm -hmm. and more and more companies have their e-commerce sites built on yeah. Shopify, um, and 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 they're what so what Microsoft has said is okay we're we're creating an integration. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know what's interesting though is I've got from from the Microsoft blog uh, one of the things that says e-commerce vendor Shopify has rolled out a global ERP program to build official integrations with partners including. Microsoft, NetSuite, Infor, Acumatica, and Brightpro. So I don't know if it's so much a Microsoft thing pushing for the yeah. Right. What are you What are you doing, Michael? Reading the actual article? You're just supposed <laughs> to read the headline and then just assume that this exists now and it's ready to go for for all Dynamics products. My retention rate is really low. So I read the article and I remember one sentence. So, so that's very, why I read the article. <laughs> very good, very good. I'm very impressed. Right? You actually read the article. So what? What the article? Right. So this is the point: is that there isn't a Shopify integration with all of the Dynamics products right. today. Shopify is creating a global platform to to make integrations easier yeah. for ERP partners like Dynamics, Microsoft, uh, and and others. And um, so the message is, yeah, there are tools out there now. Now, and and I know that there are e-commerce uh, uh, companies out there mm -hmm. right now that have uh, integrations with yeah. Business Central, and they they do offer a Shopify integration. So they've already built integrations with Shopify. So there yeah. are solutions that have those out there. At least one, um, Dynamics eShop, name drop. Um, <laughs> so, but but there are others as well. So, so this is not like there's no integrations that exist today. Right, right, that right. this is something that's new. It's just a new new tool that Shopify is creating uh, to make people's lives easier. So you think it gets passed off to the to the partner to create the yeah integration? I, well I, I, yes like yeah I, yeah I think uh, partners are going to use that as an opportunity to create an integration. I personally, if I'm an end user of Business Central. I'm not even going to think about developing my own integration to Shopify. Yeah. Right. I, I am not reinventing the wheel. Right. I'm going to let someone else who's a professional who, who, who does this for a living build that wheel for me, and then I'm going to use that wheel. Makes sense. All right. Let's move on to the uh, OneDrive connection. So Business Central is going to connect or connects to OneDrive for business. And it's going to allow users to actually easily view, edit, share, and collaborate on Business Central files while actually remaining in the browser. So that's a new piece of information. Interesting. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And then I've got a couple little things from uh, Directions EMEA. I don't know how you say it. EMEA. Um, EMEA. Do you want me to jump in and talk about those, or you got something you want to talk about? Yeah, go that? go for EMEA, and then I'll talk about what I was up to last week. Go All for right. It. So this is kind of interesting. I want to get your reaction on this. I know in the in the past, especially recently too, where we're we're having trouble with 
you know, um, employees having sandboxes and how and you know being able to get in there and do things and development and whatnot, right? Yes. Okay, so now Microsoft has just announced a Dynamics 365 Business Central Partner Sandbox. Sounds nice, right? Yeah. Well, partners can purchase users at a lower price point, six dollars per user, minimum of five, and use this as you know for their demo environments, development, and validations. Now, I'll give my opinion first. I'm not a fan of partners having to purchase users to work in a product that they're trying to sell for Microsoft. I think Microsoft should allow them or afford them the opportunity to use the product for free to help sell the product. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you've got a different take on that. Do you think partners should pay? So as a as a general rule, I completely agree with you. Okay. I, I say that, um, yeah, exactly. To your point, uh, partners partners are, are who's out there selling right. Business Central. They, they should have tools that they can be able to use to develop and support the solutions, right? And learn it. Yes. Um, so this is the first I'm hearing of this announcement. This is breaking. So this today. is breaking news. Breaking news, yep. Uh, so $6 per user. Yeah, minimum um, five. So what I would say to that is um, that I, I, it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. Right. Um, because right. what it what it does is it at least it li at least makes partners or people who may be interested in being a business central partner. It at least makes them think about it. Okay. Right. I see what you're saying. Right. They have to have some sort of investment to it. They actually yeah. want to be a partner. Right. So it's kind of like if, if, if I were to um, offer something away for free, right? Uh, every literally everyone would come and get one for free just for the hell of it. But if I charge a nickel, most people probably aren't going to give me a nickel for something they don't want. But if it's free, if I'm giving it away, why wouldn't they take it? Yeah. Right. But if I if I and that's kind of what I'm equating it to, I, I maybe maybe more four dollars yeah. might have been better. No, um, I, I understand right? your point for sure. But then to the I guess to play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. does six dollars per user? I mean, is that really going to affect Microsoft's bottom line all that much if they were to offer it free to partners? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it so I both ways. I, so I see what you're saying. I yeah. I I think it right. I it for them. So for them, what it's doing is it's it's eliminating. Uh, it's minimizing to to a to a by by putting any price on it, mm -hmm. which is like three dollars, six dollars, eight dollars, yeah. whatever, it, it's making people think right and and manage those because there's some monetary value. Yeah. If it were free, if they charged partners nothing, I guarantee mm -hmm. you, you would have everybody have one. Not only would one, not one, only one, would everyone have, have one, everyone would have multiple. Uh, each you, each person. And uh, you would, they would never cancel them or close them yeah. or someone leaves, they would never, right? It's true. And I guess it has an overall effect on the uh, the speed of the process. Of Correct. The yeah, the overhead that they have yeah. to support and, right? So it's kind of like, okay, here, this is like a nominal fee yeah. uh, to do it. So I, it, Good price, it, bad price? Yeah, I mean, uh, under $10 is, is good, I think, yeah. right? Um, that's it. That's cool. Yeah, no, this is something that we struggle with actually here, right? Sure. Every it place, is, every part of uh, you know, having enough sandboxes for developers yeah. and support consultants to have their own sandbox environment that they can test things right. and, and try things out. Um, yeah, that, that has been an issue. So that's awesome news, actually. All right. Next up, it involves 2D barcodes and QR codes. So breaking news. Um, let's see this screenshot. I should look. So Azure Development Ops 2D barcodes, QR codes are coming to Business Central with the update one for 2021 Wave 2. It says the wait is over. Is that a big deal? Uh, yeah. Well, the, 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 the ability to generate 
yeah. barcodes so out of the box using standard and business QR central codes. software, QR codes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Something that's really, wonderful. I mean, it's, it's yeah, look, any, <clears throat> these days, everyone, there are certain expectations users have about software, right? The ability to generate a barcode label, yeah. Um, the ability in there are other things maybe that there are, are there or right, aren't yeah. there <laughs> currently, um, right? And people are like, wait, what do you mean? And, uh, you know, so so it, it's like you know, check the box. Yes, this this should be a standard feature out of the box. Kudos, glad it's there. Great, this great is the, announcement. You think this is the feature that uh, when we were talking to Mike Morton, where he said that there's something coming that everybody is going to be like, it should have just been there from the get go. And why was it not? No, no. Like, I think he one? was, I think he's got, I think that. So bigger. Yeah. I, right. I think that's much, much larger. Um, this is, this is good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's a great announcement. Um, but no, <laughs> nice. not to that scale. All right. So those are the two things that I got from uh, directions of Mia. Um, let's see. So let's Talk yeah. about something. Yeah, let's talk about conferences, uh, user conferences. Right. So uh, last week, uh, I had the pleasure of traveling to Houston, Texas, for the Dynamic Communities User Summit. Um, and how was the flight getting down there? Oh, thanks for asking, <laughs> Jag. Uh, yeah, I had two canceled flights. Yeah. Had to drive home from the airport, go back to bed, and come back the next day and try for a third flight. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was a peak. Southwest? Uh, no, well, no, it was not Southwest. <laughs> uh, there was there was some weather uh, that did impact one of oh. my two canceled flights. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give them that. I so, love the modesty. You don't want to call out the airlines. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but, but once I got down there, uh, I, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. It was great. It was the first uh, in-person event I've been to for uh, a conference, I should say. I've been out to client sites and things, yeah. uh, but but first time I've been out to a conference, and it was great. I led two sessions out there. Um, both uh, were were just about standing room only yeah. uh, sessions that I led, and I was kind of proud of myself like hey uh this is pretty cool yeah uh got yeah, your a, sessions are always really popular got a got a got a full room here yeah. that's that's cool and then i was later in the afternoon i was sitting around and i was talking to someone and uh, this was like towards the the end of the second day and he said hey you know your session was the only one i went to today where there was actually a person in the room talking <laughs> and, you're probably thinking what and i said i go what do you mean he goes all oh, the other presenters were virtual they were presenting <laughs> to the group of people sitting in the room virtually and i said oh, okay yeah no wonder people were sitting <laughs> were in my sessions <laughs> i was like they were just walking down the hall peeking their head and looking for like a live person wow. you know like hey can, hey can you fog a mirror <laughs> yeah. all right i'll sit down and listen to what you have to say now when you signed up were you presented with the option to do it virtually um, yeah, so I knew going in that there was that option. Uh, there were several speakers and presenters that were uh, from, from uh, not within the United States, right? And there and there are travel well, yeah, there are travel, travel restrictions, restrictions yeah. in place. So a lot of the uh, speakers were virtual, including the entire micro like a lot of the Microsoft development team, all virtual. Um, right, a lot well, of them are in most, Europe. Yeah, Denmark, Copenhagen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so we, I knew that going in, but, um, I'm, Oh yeah. So I'm curious to know what attendance was like, right? Cause I know what attendance was before the pandemic. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know if attendance would be, you know, it could go both ways, right? Attendance could skyrocket and go through the roof because people were just so anxious to get out. But then, like you said, there's traveling involved and, and, and whatnot. So I'm interested to hear what you think, attendance was was it normal was it below normal because i know whenever i go somewhere now that's local it's it's just jam-packed yeah well I, i'll tell you only and i feel comfortable saying this because i, I believe it's public information uh, mm -hmm. all the everyone got an email after the conference um so it was 
Approximately 30% of the of what attendance was two years ago. Yeah. So it's about, they said, so, and that, well, it was actually higher than that. If you consider the, the streaming uh, remote users. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there was about uh, 3,300 total attendees. Uh, 700 were streaming. Um, there were 8,000 was oh, uh, eight to 9,000 before. Uh, so there were 160 <laughs> partners. 160 partners that have presented, uh, you know, at the expo hall sponsors, and then 600 content sessions, wow. uh, like the ones I like two two of which I, I hosted. Um, so so it but it was a it was a good conference. I think the people that were there got a lot out of it. Uh, at, at at any hour where there were concurrent sessions going on, there were I would say a dozen to choose from. So. Program. If you were a developer there, there was something for you. If you were on the finance team, something for you. Manufacturing, something for you, right? Yeah. A lot of sessions. What was it like, though, with the interactions with, with people? I mean, because um, that's, I mean, that's really the benefit, right, of, of these conferences. Was it hard to do? Were you guys allowed to sit together to eat food or? or, or... Are you, in, in reference to COVID, you're kind yeah, of yeah, saying? COVID, yeah, for this, this conference. I'll put it to you this way. Um, one of the things that they did at the conference to make people feel comfortable was they came up with this idea to hand out these these rubber wristbands. They had green, which meant that you were comfortable interacting with others. Yellow, you're kind of, you know, a little hesitant. And then red meant you're really not very comfortable. Gotcha. When I checked in, there were no green bands left. Really? There were only red and yellow. So my impression is the people that took the time and were willing to travel and re register and travel and attend the conference are Our the heads, people that are yeah. comfortable already sure, yeah. with, with that, with traveling on an airplane, yeah. with staying at a hotel and, and attending a conference yeah. with, with hundreds and hun or thousands of people, right? So, um, no. no, I would say the the real, really the restriction uh, that we saw was when you were in a session room, you you, you masks were required, Not e except speaker. except for the speaker. Okay, I'm gonna say Kevin. yeah. So <laughs> the the speaker got an exemption, <laughs> but everyone else in the room uh, was required to wear a mask. Out on the concourse and, and in the other areas, uh, masks were not required. And I would say that it seemed like to me 10 or maybe 20%, but probably 10% or less of the people were, were wearing a mask out in those out in those. Well, they areas. had a lot of social distancing uh, protocols in place, right? So you could social distance if you wanted to? You could. Um, I mean, I ate lunch at, you know, the big round tables. They have oh, all yeah, set yeah. up and, and you grab your boxed lunch. They had boxed oh. lunch. So not like a buffet where yeah. everyone's ladling their food out, right, of a, right. out of a big trough. Um, so they had like individual boxed lunches that you could pick. Um, but I sat at a table with like eight people or seven other people. Not bad, nice. And, and had nice conversations and met some very interesting people uh, and had a good time. So one more question though. So you, are you sure that when you, when you, you said when you checked in, you saw the green blaze bracelets, the red and the yellow and all the green were gone. Is that because you checked into the wrong place, the wrong conference or, or no? Oh, I see what you're, I see where you're going here. <laughs> Are you, are you, you got to tell a story. Are you saying it was my <laughs> fault that I tried to check into the wrong conference? <laughs> no, no, that you I, picture. That I, want, that I thought I was at Valve World Expo <laughs> Conference? No, not at all. It's funny, though, because the picture you showed with the, the, the stand for the conference? Yeah. I guess I am a knucklehead because I didn't even read it. Right? No, no. It's assumed. Who did? You, you walk in the <laughs> conference hall. You see the big dynamics sign outside on the building you walk inside you see a big banner that says yeah. registration level one you just assume you walk over to the woman the yeah. nice looking kind woman sitting there yeah and you give her your name and she says i don't see you on here <laughs> and it's, uh it's because i'm a presenter i said maybe <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's because i'm a speaker yeah. and she goes no nope, still nothing <laughs> Uh, so it yeah, had, that had to happen so much. To, uh, I, I would, that's where I, that, so that, yeah, I'm going to guess I was not the only person no. at the conference that tried to register for valve world, no. judging or, not that, register, but judging by that picture, minimum 50% tried to register at valve. <laughs> <laughs> minimum. <laughs> minimum. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.
Uh, oh, too good, too good. I'm not sure if it was that high, but I certainly probably wasn't alone. Yeah. So speaking of the Dynamics Community Summit, have, have you heard about Dynamics Con? I'd love for you to tell me something. <laughs> Well, I don't know too much. I just recently heard about it myself. And uh, it's also, it's it's kind of like how Dynamics Community Summit used to be, or is still trying to be, I guess, um, where it's a bunch of different presenters and they're they're hosting it in, you know, in a, in a resort. And so it's it's the same premise. And it also, it almost seems like they're trying to compete with Dynamics Communities, yeah. which is interesting, even more so because they're hosting their Dynamics Con one month after Dynamics Communities hosted hosted theirs, but it's just it's something new. It's upcoming. Um, just I'm just it's kind of interesting that I have not heard a lot about it. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can find out through yeah one of our ISV partners. Yeah, I think it's relatively new, and yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it is a it's a effectively a direct co competitor, you know, to the Dynamic Communities User Summit. Yeah. Um, a lot of the same, if you look at, you know, we've been around, it's like a, you know, the old adage, you know, it's a small world right. uh, applies. If you look at uh, some of the sponsors and the presenters of Dynamics Con, you'll see a lot of the same faces, um, right? A lot of the, and, and a lot of the faces that I saw at the summit last week um, Presenting are, are speakers yeah. and presenters. Uh, at this at the Dynamics Con conference, it's kind of crazy because they're so close, but, yeah. which makes me think that they're you know they're definitely trying to be a direct competitor. Yeah, what what I don't know is you know how many um, how many uh, are, it, people are going to be on site, how many people are, are remote. It's a this is a one day conference in November. Yeah. So the, yeah, so it's a one day conference, and there's a max amount of people, and it is set to five hundred. So definitely a little bit smaller, uh, but they they're saying it's for for COVID, you know, COVID concerns. Uh, I think they did this Dynamics Con last year. I can't remember though if it was free and virtual, and if I attended, I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, I don't think I did because hmm. it, it seems like it's new when I heard about it. But yeah, it's very similar, different tracks. You know, there's Business Central sessions, mm -hmm. there's CE sessions, and by the way, if you're like me, you know, CE um what what's that just another acronym yeah another acronym <laughs> and 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 actually i know if you're in the ce world you're like what that's been like that forever but if you live and breathe and or you're swimming in the business central pool all day every day right um ce customer engagement oh i thought commerce experience see no customer <laughs> engagement it's the new it's basically d365 sales yeah right it's now called it's now referred to as ce yeah, yeah. So, Which the whole naming thing be be behind Dynamics 365 for sales and the way it's referred to in the Microsoft world, when it's generally when they say Dynamics 365, I've noticed Microsoft people are referring to sales, but it could mean so many other products. So it could mean F and O. It, yeah, it can mean a lot of things, which is what's fine. Great operations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, anyways, sorry. All right. But well, yeah. Another another new uh, another new conference and uh, you know group uh, that people can uh, attend these sessions and maybe it'll be a future speaker one. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, we'll get we'll get involved. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So only thing left I have on my list is the new commerce experience. I don't know if you want to get something before that. That's it. Yeah, the new commerce experience for Microsoft Cloud Solutions. Yeah. So I'll keep it a little bit more brief. I, I recorded a video with some slides already that I'll link to in, in, in the show notes. But really, uh, to kind of break it down is you're still going to go to Partner Center, and it's going to still look the same. The only real difference is, I guess, the way certain things are transacted, subscriptions, trial subscriptions, and, and paid subscriptions. Um, for instance, with the trial subscription, and we just had somebody with this uh, yesterday, if you sign somebody up for a trial, it's automatically selected to where that trial is going to renew for a like-to-like -like offer. I'm not a fan of this. I think it should not be automatically selected. I think you should have the option for it. You know, because a trial is what, 25, 25 users? Come on. It's like everything else. You're opted in by, right? Do you do you want to receive our daily emails and the box is checked and you have to uncheck it yeah, to but, not get the daily emails? Right. right. But the only difference is, though, if you're using 25 
trial users, you know, October 30th and you November 1st, it becomes paid for. You don't get a bill for $2,500. Yeah, no, it just goes. So yeah, so it's that that's not the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that plays out. Subscriptions are going to be a little bit different too. Uh, there's going to be a monthly subscription, uh, an annual subscription and a 36 month subscription. There is already currently an annual subscription, which take it as you want, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, that that's one of the things I think that that uh, partners and users, customers may not really have even been aware of. Yeah. So which is let's say you're a brand new uh, brand new business central customer and you sign up on let's make it easy. November 1st um, is is in, in, right. It's a monthly subscription. You're yep. paying monthly. Right. Let's say you have five users. Yep. You have you're using premium. So you're you're pay, paying five hundred dollars per yep. month, and to get started, and uh, and it's always a month to month deal. You could cancel a user if you didn't. Maybe you only need four next month. Yep. You can cancel a user at any you time could, during the month. At any point, and then you could add another user. Well, behind the scenes, um, when 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 you've signed someone up for a subscription, there there is an annual contract term. That is defined and it has been tracked at Microsoft. Yeah. It's just never really been enforced or used for anything. Never has. <laughs> and now what's changing is they're saying, well, if you sign up on November 1st, your anniversary date is November 1st through October 31st of next year, 2022. Yep. For the and if and you now have an option to to choose, do you want an a monthly contract where you have the flexibility to add or cancel users each month mm -hmm. or do you want to sign up for an annual contract yes and if you sign up for an annual contract uh you are locked in for that number of users for a year and for the year for a it's year be clear right i mean for the full year after 72 hours of signing that contract or yes you cannot add or yes. you cannot remove a user yeah, it's like and a, expect not to pay for it. Correct. And You're and, for it. and um now you now you will get a lower price point. So there is a there is a price change that's yeah. coming up. And from what it seems like is that to get the current pricing, you're gonna have to agree to an annual contract. Yes. If you want the flexibility to go month to month like you have been. Uh, there's going to be a premium on that. 20% more. We don't know the exact rate, but there, the expectation is 20%. Yeah. And also, what we just found out a couple of days ago, too, I think you're on the call. I can't remember. The 36 month, I think you're on the call. The 36 month option, if you choose, is actually going to be discounted more than the annual uh, contract. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're willing to commit to three years, three years, yeah, it's going to be even yeah. cheaper for you. Yep. So I think, uh, so here's, so here's my so you're like what what's going on so here here's the here's what I here's my takeaway from it is that if if you're if you're a, a new business central customer or office 365 or whatever it is and you're not sure if this is the long term solution for you start off on the month to month contract yes. which is the 100%. new a new option that a partner can set you up for in business in in in, in mm -hmm. Microsoft Cloud portal um, and then once you're deployed you're up and running you're live um, switch some of those monthly users to an annual contract and you will then get a, a 20 percent reduction on your users yeah and if you're really confident sign up for a three-year contract yeah and you'll get even a bigger discount now, right about now, somebody's saying, well, you know, we, we make specialized Christmas trees and, and Valentine's Day, uh, I don't know, widgets or something. So what happens when we need to have 10 more employees uh, during the holiday season? Well, what you can do is you sign your annual contract for, let's just say you have 10 regular employees that you have all year long. Sign it for the 10 employees, get your discount, and then come, you know, uh, October, whatever it may be, you can add month to month users as you need them and then and then get rid of them. So not all hope is lost. No, 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 no. It, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's, it is, it is, if you're going to, if you need the flexibility or you want that flexibility to go month to month, 
yeah, there there is going to be a new premium uh, mm -hmm. tacked on effectively, right? right? But um, for me, uh, in, in terms of Business Central, if you're new um, or you're thinking about Business Central and you're going to be new, um, sign up for the month to month. Give it a few months. Yeah. Pay a slight premium until you're comfortable that that this is a solution, and then and then uh, commit to an annual contract. So some changes, not too bad. It's going to be interesting to see what the prices are. We'll see what happens though. Yep. Ultimately, I think in, a, in the you know in the um, on, on the on the pro side, right? I think it, it could um, give people a little bit, uh, make it a little bit easier, right, to administer, right? If you uh, you could even agree to a, an annual contract oh. and pay for an annual contract yeah. up front and and reduce the the monthly billing invoices that you're getting, right? If you agree to yeah. uh, you know, prepay for a, an annual contract once a year for your licenses. I'll tell you what I like to. Um, if you t if you choose the annual contract, most partners might or a lot of partners, I would say, are going to have you pay some amount of money up front because otherwise they're on the hook for it, right? Yep. So as a customer of Business Central, then you actually have some skin in the game, as you like to say. You are now obligated for the next year to actually probably attempt to learn this product and and do the training, and you're invested in it because you're paying for the year instead of oh we did it for you know six days and four hours we didn't like it so right. we're axing it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Yep. So you know what? Nothing nothing stays the same, right? Um, <laughs> things are always changing. So here's just another mm -hmm. example. And in case you forgot that you're listening to a shot of Business Central and a beer. Uh, there's a little. You got to pour it straight though. Little, though. little, a new, new, yeah. fresh beer for you. Here. Don't, don't sideways it though. Yeah. Are you? So, uh, you're yeah. a better man than me. I don't think I'm gonna go for a second one. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right. So that's all the news we have for today. I think we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about um, how to capture images. Yep. Uh, into into Business Central. Uh, and, and then, then after uh, that, the ADP app. All right. Back, and we're going to be talking about photo capture within Business Central. Um, it's 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 one of those things where, as more and more people use cloud technology, I would say, more people are more accustomed to putting their photo on you know, their their image for Office 365 or or I guess a picture in, in Business Central for a customer or contact, I mean. Yeah. But uh, and, and Business Central is kind of making it easy to use, right? Yeah, right. And part of this is the is the, the app client, right? So now everyone is using Business Central and they've, they've got their phone. Everyone has a phone. Everyone can install the free Business Central app on their phone. Or maybe they're a service technician right, or a salesperson and they have a tablet and they're out in the field, they're talking to customers, they're going to, to visit or do repairs uh, whatever, or installations, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it might be. And so one of the things that's a natural fit is the ability to uh, take a picture of something, right? Because right? all these devices have a camera on them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are the ways uh, that, that you can leverage that to make your life easy? So if you go into Business Central, one of the things that you might notice if you open up the contacts, contact card, uh, on the contact card, there is a, a fact box over on the right side called contact picture. Okay. Um, years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, what you would, there, that existed also, but what you would have to do is you'd have to click on that picture and you'd have to import a photo okay. or an image, right? Now, how you got that image, right? You, right, so you'd have to... Maybe you took a picture or... and then you emailed it to yourself and you saved it as a file and then, yeah, you, yeah, and yeah. then you imported it, right? Now, if you go into the contact image, uh, you, can, you can import a file, import a picture, or you can hit the take button. Mm. You hit take, it it automatically uh, uh, opens the camera. Yeah. You take a picture. When you're done, you can see the picture and you can select use photo. 
and it then uploads that photo into Business Central and attaches it to the contact nice. for you. So it's a good utilization of your phone's resources, basically. Right, yeah. It saves you time. Instead of having to take the picture, save it to the file, upload the file on your desktop, and, and go through yeah, the process. Yeah, right. You're using taking these two different pieces of technology and the natural bring fit. Them together, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Bring them together. Now, you said that it's also good for using it on or using it with different things, such as like a certain sort or something, but there's a little bit more to it. That yeah. So, so one of the other things, other places where you can hit this take picture uh, button is within the incoming documents feature. So incoming documents is a standard business central feature um, and it basically allows you to uh, take any document, any file. It could be a PDF of, a, of an invoice from a vendor, but it could also be a picture. And, and, and any of these things can be incoming documents. And then an incoming document, well, again, whether it's a photo, a PDF, whatever, an image, a drawing of a of a of an item design, yeah. that incoming document can then be associated with a sales order, a sales shipment, a sales invoice, or a purchase order, a purchase receipt, or a purchase invoice. Um, so, and that within incoming documents. There's two ways you can create an incoming document. You can import a file or you can take a picture. So, Just the same way so it. as an example, let's say that I'm a I'm a um, I'm a I'm doing a delivery. Uh, I'm delivering product. I'm a truck driver. I'm delivering product to a customer and I've got my tablet with me. I deliver the product to the customer. And one of the things I need to do is I need to, they need to sign off on the on the shipment document that acknowledges that they received what we said mm -hmm. they received. So um, what, what most people traditionally would have done is they would create two copies of the shipment. Okay. One copy stays with the customer. The other copy, we get their signature on it, and then we bring it back to the office and we file it or we put it with the invoice and then we file it, mm -hmm. or maybe we scan it and we attach it to the invoice. Still a lot of manual processes basically right. involved. Yeah. Right. So what we are seeing now our customers doing is if they have a tablet or a phone, uh, they're doing the delivery, they pull up that sales order or that invoice or mm -hmm. shipment. And they can that they go to incoming documents, they can bring one copy of the shipment document. The customer signs it, I take a picture of it, it uploads it straight to Business Central and links it to that shipment. It's pretty amazing. Or that sales order or that invoice. But this is not native, I guess, is the word for business. That order. is. That oh, is. That is? Yeah. That's all there. That's all out of the box. Nice. Uh, where we have also taken this same technology is, and we found there's a huge use for it if you're using service management. Uh, you have service items and you create service orders and have technicians go on site to do maybe a machine installation or preventative maintenance or repair. Mm -hmm. um, we've incorporated for our clients incoming documents into the service uh, orders. So same thing, the service technicians on site, they have their tablet, they can see their service order mm -hmm. so they can enter their time. How much time did they spend on site? What what raw materials did they use? Maybe they had to use some spare parts or a new filter yeah. or or uh, some new widgets or screws or bolts or something that they you know used out of their truck. But they can also then take pictures of the uh, of the items that they're repairing. Yeah. Maybe there was a a gasket that was broken, or yeah. uh, a, all right, uh, something was loose. They can actually take a picture of it and automatically upload that and store that now against that service order. Wow. Now, when you when you create that extension and, you, you know, can you can you I'm assuming you can add on to that, too, to maybe include, you know, the person's name or, or something like that. A couple other fields that you want. Yeah, exactly. It's not yep. a big deal. Yeah. So just like any other extension in Business Central, if you want to store some additional pieces of information, you can. Um, but the, the taking a picture. Um, 
you know, you might take a, like the example I always use kind of, you know, in jest is, you know, the customer calls you up and it says, hey, we need someone out here quick. This part has malfunctioned, right? So you go into your service item and you see that it's currently under warranty, uh, but the technician arrives on site and they see a big footprint mark, you know, <laughs> on the side and yeah. next right at the dent, right, right where it's dented. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, take a picture of that footprint mark you know, uh, next to the dent. And, and so when the customer says, wait a minute, why isn't this covered under warranty? We can now look up that service order in the system and pull up that picture. Yeah. And this, this extension is relatively quick to build. Nothing yeah. Really yeah. So, intensive. right. So, yeah. So we, we kind of, I, I would kind of classify, you know, when, when customers talk about doing customizations to business central, I kind of group them into two classes yeah. of, of customizations. Uh, one is the more more challenging or 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 you know more serious is is where you're re, where you're redefining a process or you're building custom business logic, right? Which is maybe rules for how a price gets set on something or um, how it creates certain entries in the system. Those are those could be can be relatively complicated. Maybe they're not, but yeah. but this extension falls into the second class, which is all we're really doing is we're taking two existing pieces of functionality within Business Central um, and we're we're putting them together to form a, a new solution. So for example, in this example, right, I don't have incoming documents available on a service order. So all we're really doing is we are providing the ability for incoming documents to be used on a service order. We're not inventing the wheel on yeah. how to take a picture, how to import files. Right. We're just we're just taking just, two just of these marrying, features yeah, and just marrying two features. Just putting them together. Yeah. Right? Not bad, not bad at all. I like it. It's definitely a great way, an innovative way to use uh, you know, the phone's capabilities since everything is a mobile app nowadays. Um, yep. It could be it could be even the production floor, right? And a, a final application of this could be a production order, where again we we would need to uh, add extend the functionality of production orders to add incoming documents to production orders. But another example would be that um, I'm working on a production order, and I need to do quality checks. And uh, one of the ways that maybe it would be helpful for me to do a quality check is to take a picture of one of the units that I produced, uh, either to show that it's it looks good yeah. or to show a potential defect if I have a quality issue. Right, right. I mean, just for documentation alone, just to document whatever it is like you're saying, it's, it's, it's a great feature, I mean. Right, and users who are on the shop floor um, or, or any, literally anywhere, right, can have their phone or a tablet mm -hmm. with, which has a camera built in uh, and they can use this this functionality that that uh, incorporates the camera into Business Central. Uh, nice. Right. Well, what do you see? Do you see Microsoft uh, taking this functionality a step further with anything, or maybe incorporating it on every page in Business Central? Or you know what? I would say go to Business Central Ideas <laughs> and and post some okay. ideas if it's not already out there. Um, because they do, Microsoft does look at that and they do act on that. So if we get enough votes uh, on feature requests, uh, we can get them to add it to everywhere. All right, no taking. I'm going to go and post it under our podcast name. <laughs> All right, uh, up next, we're going to be talking about uh, ADP, the app. So stick around. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're going to be talking about ADP's uh, integration, I guess, with with Business Central. This new this new app they've got uh, out. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, so for a for Business Central, it's out right now. FNO, I think it's it's coming out. It's not out yet, and yep. uh, it's also available in Teams. Yeah. So it integrate with it or whatnot. But it, it, you would think right off the bat, it's going to be a pretty popular application, right? Because a lot of people want HR and payroll and 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 everything that's associated with it with Business Central. Yeah. But it could be maybe a little misleading, right? If it says integration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're definitely an integration. It's it's a, you know, I I think um 
so so let's start let let's start with this right there there's every company right uh, if you're using business central mm-hmm. you have you have to do payroll mm-hmm. and there's two ways that you can do payroll you can hire someone who is a payroll uh, person yeah. internally and they're using some software to run payroll That could be a standalone internal pack in-house package that you're using, or it could be an app for Business Central. There are apps where where some where you are responsible for running payroll in-house. Okay. Right. Then there are external third-party outside payroll services, uh, Paychecks, Paylocity, and ADP. Okay. Right. Our example for those. those. And those companies all have their own user interfaces. It's a, it's a, a lot of them are all cloud based now. Mm-hmm. So you you log into their cloud software. You manage all your payroll over in their system. And um, so for ADP, what's unique is ADP has now developed an app that is an integration between their cloud AD payroll software, which is called work and HR software, which is called Workforce Now, and Business Central. So when you're in ADP Workforce Now, you set up a new employee, that will create an employee record in Business Central. Okay, nice. And, and at the end of the two week, let's say you do payroll every two weeks, at the end of the two weeks, you're done with payroll, you can transmit a journal entry into Business Central. So, okay. so that is that's the integration, right? So it, it is integrated. Um, however, it's it's not in-house payroll, right? You're not you're not managing. I mean, you're ADP not still is, yeah. payroll. The the payroll process and data is not stored in Business Central okay. with this integration. ADP is doing all of that for you in in their software. Okay. So I personally like this option. I like having a separate database. Uh, in this case, provided by ADP, that's housed in ADP software with AD, with separate security. It's a separate database, so people who are running Business Central don't see any data. The only real data they see that's also in in ADP payroll would be my employee names, which yeah. who cares, and a journal entry. So you're saying you like it because of the security reasons? Then? I like why? yeah, I like why? I like not having payroll data like detailed pay information yeah. stored in Business Central. That's my personal preference. Um, some people are looking for that. And there are apps for Business Central that allow you to do all of your payroll management inside Business Central. Okay. This is an integration and you're paying. And so you pay ADP a monthly fee uh, and, and you then log into the ADP Workforce Now portal. You can set up employees, but you can do a whole ton more. You can manage benefits, yeah. track applicants, uh, right? And and recruiting and hiring process and onboarding and uh, diversity and inclusion and all these other things that human resource packages provide. Yeah. That is available in, in, in a solution like a third-party application like ADP Workforce Now. So, so let me ask you, do you think that if you were to spend the time to set set up in-house payroll within Business Central with all the permissions and the security and whatnot, that it could be worth it, or is it still just not not really beneficial? Um, it it could. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna say it could be worth it. <laughs> It'd be nice. I would I would like for uh, <clears throat> I would want one of these app developers. Hopefully, maybe they're listening, and let's have them on and talk to them about what are all of the benefits and the reason that you should be using an in-house payroll service. Ooh, so a little bit of a debate. Not a debate. I'm not going (laughs) to challenge anyone. I don't know, right? I just know that, like, personally, from my opinion, I would rather rely on... Somebody else to provide all the... An outside service, because there's also, like, certain uh, employment and payroll tax filing Mm -hmm. 
uh, requirements and tax filings and statements that have to be uh, completed on a, on a quarterly or annual basis. Yeah. So, and I don't want to rely on my in-house staff to remember right. to do those and to know how to do them accurately. Because most likely you don't have a dedicated person just for that and they have other responsibilities, right? And Correct. Again, right. Yeah. yeah. There's a, it what, makes sense. what does it cost to keep someone employed who, who, who is a expert in payroll and HR? Yeah. Right. And, and to know what they need to be doing and when they need to be doing it. But if you're if you're using an outside service, you you right there there's all these tools and and things where they're providing these services for you. So, but I I would I I'm not going to say there's not a place for in-house payroll where you're managing it inside Business Central. There probably is. Uh, and but but let, and, and yeah. let's talk about that. What Maybe are some of those companies? things? Who knows? Yeah, I love it. Maybe the, you know there there could be a financial return on your investment uh, to doing it. I I but but. Probably there's certain um, qualifications or criteria, yeah. right? That would would have to be met to provide that return on your investment. That's all. Gotcha. So, yeah. so when you think ADP, do you think do you think a step above like a Paylocity or, or something else? Because I know ADP for mm-hmm. years and years and years has had the branding recognition that these other companies have not had. And, you know, even when I was younger, my first jobs, I always remember you get your paycheck, the stuff, it's an ADP on it. You yeah, know? I mean, for years and years and years, ADP is like kind of like been the gold standard, right, yeah. for payroll, yeah. for small and mid-sized businesses. Um, so I, I think there's there's probably merit to that and that mm-hmm. maybe is, is still true. Um, you know, could, can you can you get, if you're looking for like a bare bones payroll, you know, cloud yeah. service, are there other options out there that are more affordable? Probably. Yeah. But, um, they're not but the age, do they have the comprehensiveness and all of the offerings that ADP might have? Right. So, so I'm not. Yeah. It, it, it may not be for every uh, business out there, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but if I think if you are looking for a comprehensive HR and payroll solution that has an integration to Business Central, like we talked about, yeah. financial data, employee data, then, right, this is, a, this is something standard. ADP Workforce Now is something I think you should work for, look, yeah. for, uh, look at. Yeah, it's probably the gold standard, but I don't yeah. know enough to say that 100% yeah, true, no. but yeah. I think, uh, like I said, it, it, it's uh, like if you asked me, like if you came to me and you said, hey, uh, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a really robust, solid uh, HR and payroll solution, and that that has an integration with with Business Central. I would I would point you to ADP. Now I know you're not a specialist, right, for ADP or whatnot. No, but do you think this has more benefit for the smaller, mid-sized company as opposed to the enterprise company, or um, no, hard to say. No, I I I, I wouldn't. No, I. I and any size, yeah, probably. I mean, for Business Central, right? We, I don't care about. Well, that's true. I yeah, don't yeah. care about enterprise companies, <laughs> yeah. frankly. Right. I care about small, mid-sized businesses. Yeah. Right. So that that's who we that's who we work with. Um, so that's what I care about. But um, I think it's. I think we have no. I think they said that for them though, isn't it? Uh, their minimum. 25 employees what they like to work with 25 to yeah i mean well look the reality is that to implement a solution like this where you're looking for the features and the functionality of an hr and payroll package you're going to probably need 50 or more employees right just to make it work if you're less than that you're not looking for all the sophistication right right of, of this right you can get by with and you can quote skimp on some of the the HR policy and procedures, right? <laughs> but but when when you have 250 or 500 employees, you need the structure. You need yeah, yeah better ways to track and manage and report on on these things. And and that's when I think a solution like this comes in comes into play. Yeah. All right, nice. Maybe in the future we can get somebody on from ADP and they'll talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, they can they can share some more information and fill in some of the holes here that we're what we're leaving. Maybe one seat for ADP, <laughs> one seat for Spotify, round table debates. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, crazy. All right, next up we're gonna 
talk a little bit about this beer, finish off the uh, the podcast with some closing statements. So. All right, so we're winding on the podcast, and uh, we got to do some beer ratings to talk a little bit about this beer. Um, I'm not a fan. Let's put it that way. This beer, it just came to me what it reminds me of. We all know I'm not a huge beer drinker, right? I never was, and maybe I'll never will be. But <laughs> um, I once tried to make beer myself. Oh, I, yeah? I did. No joke. <laughs> Got the kit and everything, right? Go figure. <laughs> and it came out flat and tasted like this, and I couldn't stand it. And I threw the whole thing out, right? So now I'm wondering, though, maybe I bought the wrong ingredients and it was supposed to taste like that. Or maybe you should have bottled it and you'd have been a millionaire. Right yeah, now. yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Threw it out of my garage. <laughs> so I can't even get one down. Can't even get one beer down. Oh, that's that, maybe that, a, that means a low score. That's a low score. I see a low score. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah it's, <laughs> this might be the least I've drunk out of any beer. There's been a couple that I haven't finished, but I think I got more down than this. Are you sick? No, you I'm not sick. No, just, no, not at all. It's just, it smells better than it tastes. It's piss water. You <clears> agree it, with it, that it, guy, though? 100%. 100%. It's piss water. Yes. Now, had this had more carbonation, I might have been able to get it down, right? Because then it's, yeah. but it's, it's weak and it's smooth and it's, what's enticing about it? Like, why would you ever want to get another one? Would you ever go out and buy one of these or order this? Uh, the answer is no, because if, I, if, if it, well, yeah, but here's the, here's my caveat, my uh, qualifier to that. No, because if I'm going to drink something like this, I'm going to get a Guinness. But you don't get the vanilla flavor. <laughs> <laughs> it's so overpowering. No, it's yeah, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's, it's hardly <laughs> detectable. Um, so uh, we, we kind of, uh, was it a month ago or two months ago, we went through our, our, our historical Last beer ratings. Last month, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm trapped uh, into forever referencing this list <laughs> where I can see what I rated other beers. And I have to, I have to, like, uh, is it good or bad? Live, live within those bounds. You so know? Is that good or bad, though? Uh, what it means is that uh, I, this gets an 84. Oh, wow. Uh, and the reason it gets an 84 is because it is uh, better than the Fuel Cafe coffee coffee flavored stout that we had. I like that one. But it, I would not drink this before I drank a Dynamo Copper Lager or a Spotted Cow. Okay. So, so 84, 84 is right? pretty good. So I have to I good. have to wedge it right in there at an at an okay. 84. I gotta go into teams here, pull up the podcast analytics real quick. I gotta find out what the lowest ones that I've drunk were. Oh, I tell you right here. You got it? Yeah. Brooklyn special effects, non-alcoholic. You gave oh, it, you gave it a, I forgot about that. You gave it a, <laughs> a 19 out of a hundred. Tell me though, the texture doesn't taste feel the same in your mouth. Come it's, on. <laughs> No, and then uh, the above one. above that was your Line and Kugel's Cherry Blonde Lager. What did I give that one? 50. I give that one a 50? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, all right, this is going to shock you. I would rather drink the non-alcoholic beer. Come on! Side. I would rather drink, I swear, hand to God, <laughs> how about <laughs> from God's mouth to my mouth. <laughs> I would rather drink that non-alcoholic beer than this one. Which is bad. I'm talking bad. This is some unprecedented shit we're yes, going down right now. This is bad. I actually feel bad that I gave that non-alcoholic beer a 19, I guess. I never thought I'd be able to go lower than that. <laughs> wow. So I can't, I'm not, I can't go too much lower, right? Because this you is You need to this save yourself flat. some room for future, yes, yes, for future negative yeah. reviews. This is flat, just like that non-alcoholic beer was to me flat. And uh, not as flat. But the taste is worse to me, right? So this is going to go, we're going to go 17. 17, wow. 17. That's really low. So what I think I like about it is that it is, uh, and let's go back a little bit to this nitro deal, right? So it's called a nitro vanilla porter. Nitro means, right, how the carbonation is created. And, and that nitro creates like a really smooth, almost creaminess to it, which makes it 
uh, very drinkable. I, and I think I read that one quote where the guy says, even slammable. Yeah, I totally agree so. with that, right? Because it, it, is there's that the nitro infused part. Though? Yeah, I think that is. There's no bite. It's not harsh. There's like not a ton of carbonation. So um, to me, it goes down really smooth. It is not as good as a Guinness. Um, I'll, 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 that un, unequivocally, that it, so I'll not as good as a Guinness. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it it is in that same uh, sphere of kind of smoothness. Yeah. Uh, going down. I can tell you what I'm upset about though. I got hoodwinked for the kids' new term, whatever old term maybe, about watching the uh, cascade of the foam in the glass. I thought it was weak, nothing special, less foam than other beers. <laughs> so the buying point, I got lied to on. So 84 and I did a 17. Oh my God. So 17, almost, so, uh, almost out of spite. You're spiteful. Well, no, I just can't. spiteful about the cascade, about being missed. Well, no, not that. I'm actually upset at myself that I went so low, I guess, on that non alcoholic beer <laughs> because I thought I would never you go left lower yourself than that. No room for yeah, error. I thought I'd never go lower than that. Like, look, what would you say? I got a half a beer left? That's pretty bad. That's that, yeah. That, I'm a big dude. That's I, you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty bad. Unprecedented. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. Well, that was. I hope we had fun. I had fun. I I finished both of my sixteen ounce cans here. So. There's another one in there for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it <laughs> sounds like. It. Yeah, it was smooth. Hey, it goes down. No big deal. All right. Well, always a good time. Uh, I think we touched on a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, thanks to everybody who's listening, and uh, you know, we'll be back next month, right? Ta ta. As we end today's podcast, we want to give a big thank you to everyone who listens, shares this podcast, and leaves us reviews. You've taken a good amount of your time out of your day, and we truly appreciate it. Thanks again, and uh, don't be afraid to email us at marketing at solsyst.com with your tips for the podcast, or maybe you'd even like to be a guest during an episode.